wow, Minecraft 1.17 is so cool. It's got caves. It's got cliffs. It's go. Oh God, what? It's got giant cracks in the ground that you can. On that exciting note, welcome to the new Minecraft snapshot brought to you by our good friend, the like button. Check it out and click it down below the video. Also, hashtag Jardon to one mil on Insta. 2021 Instagram.com slash Jordan Marin link in the description if you feel like helping out the cause. So anyway, new terrain generation feature with this snapshot. Uh, cracks in the ground. Not ravines. Cracks. Because apparently the world is falling apart. That's why we can get below Y equals zero because it's just, it's splitting open and yeah, all hex breaking loose. So if you're not looking where you're going, uh, it can really mess you up. Let's go into spectator so you can see kind of the full scope of this thing. It's, um, I don't, I don't think even if you have Feather Falling maxed out, you're gonna survive that one. Oh my goodness. And they're kind of all over the place, so I'm definitely gonna do a survival let's play or something like that, and I'm gonna end up falling into one. It's just bound to happen. There's one over here. Yep. Also goes, also goes pretty deep down. This one also goes pretty deep down. Not a whole bunch of ledges in them either for you to be able to catch on to. Maybe you can get lucky and if you have your water bucket at the ready, but I mean, these things, let's just look at the Y value difference between the top and the bottom over on this one here. Okay, so we've we've started off at Y79, and then as we slowly work our way down to the bottom, perhaps seeing some texture changes on the way, to where I landed, negative, negative 12. All right, almost a hundred block drop, if you're not looking where you're going, so uh, be careful. Next up, and I can't describe it too specifically because how do I describe the way caves look? They tweak the cave generation a bit further. I think part of it is now some of the things you see above Y equals zero, you'll see below Y equals zero. But I just wanted to say, this that I found right here might be my favorite bit of underground terrain generation that I've seen so far. Look at this absolute unit of a cavern with what looks like kind of the basalt pillars you'd find in the nether and the basalt deltas, except it's made out of not grimstone, it's it's a new block now. I guess they just replaced it. It's a pretty similar texture, but now it's called deep slate. So it's got a different texture on top. I think the side is is pretty similar. And along with that, you recall how last week, if you saw that snapshot video, that I said, I bet they won't do it, but wouldn't it be cool if they made the ores blend into what was then grimstone, now deep slate? But I was like, they're not gonna, they wouldn't, they wouldn't change the texture of the ores. Would they? And the answer is, they would. You'll notice now the ores don't just stick out like a sore thumb because they're based on a stone texture. Now, they've actually been brought into the, the deep slate. Kind of cool. You get a little sneak peek of the gold over there. So hey, well, let's take a closer look at, at all of them. Oh, this is cool. Wow, this is kind of unexpected here. I can't believe the thing I said is definitely they heard what I said and they're like, huh, that's a good idea that Jardon had. Let's... Let's do it. That's definitely what happened. Okay, let's take a closer look at the new textures, new ores. Are they new? New old ores, new ores. Same drops? I don't know what to call them. Anyway, another thing to note about the deep slate is that when you mine it, you actually get a different drop. I mean, pretty similar, but it's called cobbled deep slate. And the only difference I can tell is it looks like they took the side texture and put it to the top. It looks like the sides are pretty identical. But unlike stone and cobblestone, it doesn't look like there's a way to actually get it back into deep slate. You can't smelt it, and putting it in a stone cutter doesn't let you take it back to deep slate. So as far as I can tell, and I could be wrong, very good chance that I'm wrong, the only way to actually get the deep slate, if you like this top texture and want to keep it, is if you use silk touch. So obviously then you can collect the deep slate in its original form. There we go, we can put it back. And look at the other texture changes. So, we've got a um, pretty cool change, I think, to, to the copper. It's got like some of the oxidation, the blue elements in there, gives a little bit more pop. And uh, I like it. Iron. Whoa. Look what they did to my boy. I'm not, I'm, it's change. It's change. It takes some getting used to. I mean, it looks cool. It blends in with the new updated styles. <laughs> Whew, to back up a little bit, I was like, wait a minute. What is this? What's going on here? I saw it in the in the deep slate texture and I was like, oh, so they just made a change to the iron when it's generated inside of the deep slate. No, no, that's iron. I mean, dang, dude. It pops out though, that's for sure. Like if you saw the world in black and white when previously all the ores would look the same, I mean, now you know that's iron. 
you know for sure off the texture. So that's probably the most drastic one, I think. But yeah, that's, I mean, it, it does, it looks like, you know, it's peeking through the back. It's kind of, it's cool. They're updating all the ore textures. So there we go, along with the Caves and Cliffs update. Uh, Lappy's more of a minor touch-up, again, brings it up to the modern era where it's got a little bit more, you know, three-dimensional look to it, less of the super hard edges. I mean, obviously, look, it's 16 by 16. It's got hard edges, but you know what I'm saying. Same with the Emerald. Slight update there, but still sort of retains the original look. And then we move over to the ores that are in the Deep Slate variety. So we've got the Deep Slate Iron. We've got, let me just switch into Creative so I can pick them up. Deep Slate Gold. Deep Slate Lappies, Deep Slate Redstone, and Deep Slate Diamond. It looks like, you know, the texture is just taken over and put onto the Deep Slate, and there you have it. But another thing to mention about them is they do actually take a little bit longer to mine. So if we say, take the regular Lappies, put it on top, and then we mine it. Keep in mind how long that took. Deep Slate just, it just takes a little bit longer. A little bit longer to do. I don't know if it's a factor of two, but a little bit longer. Keep it in mind. I guess it makes sense, you know, these blocks down here, a lot of pressure sitting on them, okay? We have high expectations for them in this new update. Also, it's just, you know, they're getting crushed under the weight of everything above Y equals zero. So they're more dense. They're more compact. I think you still get the same amount of diamonds. You just get one diamond, but it's a, it's a more compact diamond. It's a it's more compact carbon atoms. You can have different sizes of carbon atoms. This is science. I'm a scientist. Trust me. So anyway, that's that's the new stuff uh, right there with, with new textures and the deep slate ores. We've also got a little switcheroo on our hands. You see there's no more andesite generating down here like there was in the last snapshot. Instead, it's been replaced with the tough, which is the stuff, the tough stuff from the amethyst geodes, except it's no longer in the amethyst geodes. Uh, because it generates in, in clumps below y equals zero amidst the deep slate, which I'm still really inclined to call Grimstone from last week, but just naming conventions all over the place. Anyway, it seems that when ores generate inside of a clump of tough, that they'll generate in the stone variety rather than the deep slate. Uh, I don't know if that's just how it works or if in the future it'll go back to deep slate if it's below y equals zero, but I suppose the stone blends in a little bit more. Anyway, the tough actually goes really well with the deep slate. It blends in nicely. It's a good match, I think more so than the andesite. You can see there's a little bit more over here, a little bit more over here, not to be confused now with the geodes. So these are not geodes anymore peeking through the deep slate. These are just, it's clusters of tough that are just, they're there for uh, variety. And you, you can see the lapis here is actually generating in stone format. I'm sure that'll be uh, fixed in the next snapshot, but just another little terrain generation thing to be aware of. Okay, I know, I know, the anxiety, it must just be eating you alive. The question on everybody's mind, if the tough is now just a terrain generation feature below y equals zero, what happened to the outer shell of the amethyst geodes? Are the geodes just exposed, naked, for the world to see? They deserve better than this. And don't worry, they have a new outer shell. It's a new form of basalt called smooth basalt because basalt is catching up to the rest of the, I don't know, stone-like blocks and now having a, a smooth variety to it. So it blends in nicely with the deep slate, obviously a little bit more contrast if this was in the middle of stone, but this is now the new outer shell. You can also get smooth basalt by smelting basalt that you would find in the nether. And then when we wait for that, Play some Jeopardy music in the background, but probably don't actually do that. DMCA, you know the drill. Then you get yourself some smooth basalt, and I suppose we could compare the two textures here. Pretty similar on the sides, but uh, or or whichever way you place it, pretty similar on the sides, and uh, different on the top, just smoother all the way around. So hey, a little bit of the Nether brought straight into the overworld for you. How nifty, even though you can't. Uh, convert back from smooth to basalt, I don't think. So you still got to go to the nether for this stuff. Oh boy, everyone, it's the most exciting time of the video. It's ore distribution chart time! And if you're not excited, how dare you? First off, do you not like fun? But also, there's one more thing to show you in-game, so make sure to stick around. So this week, we have an update to the way the chart actually displays itself, which is no more stair-steppy things here. It's just nice, smooth triangles, and it's not a functional change in the way ores are generating, because as you can see, it applies to Minecraft 1.16 and its lappies display as well. 
Also, we've received a clarification here in what the rectangular sections are, which means it's more for strip mining. It doesn't show up in the actual caves. There's no air exposure. Another very important thing to pull from this is that they're not called ore veins. That's incorrect terminology. They are called ore blobs, as seen here by saying smaller blobs of iron will now actually generate below y equals zero. That is the biggest change of all these so far, is that previously it was like, oh, iron can only appear in, in this area up here, above y equals zero primarily, except for the tail end down there. But now actually, if you're strip mining, it does look like you'll be able to run into iron down here. And so it does look like most effective to, to strip mine way, way down here around like y equals negative 48, because you'll still run into a bit of gold. You'll get the lapis that's not exposed to the air. You'll get the diamonds, you'll get some iron, you get the redstone. So looking like negative 48 might end up being the play for strip mining, even if you're not really getting as much copper. And then the mountains seem to be the same. Again, they haven't been added yet, so I doubt that they're going to be doing much tweaking or changing to that until they're added. But still, not final, and Microsoft or Mojang will be held liable for any losses or damages that occur to your mining business, depending upon how you set it up now, versus Minecraft 1.17 being released. Okay? Great. All right. I promised you one more thing in game for all you ore distribution chart haters out there, whoever you are. And oh boy, is it a massive one. All right. So check it out. Now when there's a spore blossom in play, not only do you get the particles dripping from it, but it like creates an atmosphere of green particles all the way around it. It's like the particles that you get in the nether, but they're green. And in the overworld, and if you put them together, it would be Christmassy because it'd be like red in the nether and green. And anyway, when you're in the lush caves, it just means you're going to have this cool atmosphere created by the spore blossoms creating their ambience. Like, it, it's a pretty big area of effect here. So, that's, that's what I held you up for. This is the final thing. Hey man, it's atmospheric, okay? Look forward to the lush caves. That's it for this snapshot. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Make sure to like if you liked. It's a great sponsor of ours. In addition to Instagram.com slash Jordan Mare and hashtag Jardon to one mil on Insta 2021. Help out the cause. Link in the description. And that's pretty much it. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Stay tuned. Playlist in the description for other update videos. Past, present, future, all of that. And that's where I'll leave you off. I'll see you next time.